since Monday night after Raw, the WWE was hyping up the fact that Wednesday night at 9.30 a.m., which was yesterday, we would have D-Generation X, Stephanie McMahon, Vince, John Cena, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and the modicum of other guys present to speak about something exciting. And since it was in a tech center, everybody kind of guessed that it was related to the WWE Network. And there were a few fringe groups that actually thought that the Attitude Era was going to come back just because D-Generation X and Shawn Michaels, I mean, Stone Cold was present. Well, that fringe group was incredibly stupid, but I really can't blame them for dreaming big. But, whatever. Obviously, it was the WWE Network, which turns out it isn't like, let's say, an actual television channel, like what Funimation was trying to do, or what Sky Sports is for the UK when you try to watch a bunch of foreign, foreign to them kind of sports shows, or if they want to watch wrestling itself, they gotta get that package. However, in looking at this, this is actually a better concept than I expected. I wasn't looking forward to the WWE Network. I expected it to be a gigantic bust. Even some of my casual wrestling friends were hype about this. But, let's just get started in terms of the actual show. Because I know D-Generation X was doing a good job of hyping it up. But I didn't get to see it that far because WWE app really kills the batteries on my phone. I didn't think it would be convenient to waste my time and stuff that I already know. I already know what this package is going to have. It's going to have the good stuff. All the pay-per-views from the past are essentially free right now. From both the WWE, WCW, and ECW. Also, those programs are now available. You can see the pre-show for SmackDown and Raw. Which I just see as gigantic waste. I don't really care about the pre-show. In fact, a lot of the stuff that they're showcasing to us really looks like something that is more fitting for the YouTube channel for WWE. For example, WWE Countdown, which is a countdown show for like the top 10 whatever, top 5 uh, catchphrases, ring entrances, theme songs. I mean, the speculation side is probably what it is. You got WWE reruns, you can see stuff from the past, but with, like, matches, but with guest commentary and breaking shit down in depth. You have a program on the Monday Night Wars, which really, it just, a more in-depth version of a documentary. But I don't really care about that because, to be honest, I'm kind of thinking this Monday Night War shit, we looked at the history enough. We've analyzed, we've dissected each and every little event, it's interesting when you get down to the smaller details, but it is what it is. I really don't care. 
you have Legends House, which is a glorified Boy Meets World. I mean, not Boy Meets World. The Real World. That MTV reality show where each season a bunch of white guys and some girls live with each other for a while. Except instead of a bunch of college frat douchebags and skanky chicks, you got 55-year-old wrestlers past their prime all moving in together. And I mean Gene Okerlund. Whatever. You have NXT and superstars. For a while, a short while, I was actually trying to promote superstars. I would review superstars episodes on JTV Live, but to be fair, superstars isn't worth watching. It's not as bad as main events in terms of how people are presented there, but it's essentially the same thing except not good enough for television time. The fact that NXT is finally available to see is a good thing. Because now that NXT is a developmental program with Triple H and all these guys working there, it's worth seeing. NXT Redemption was terrible, and I feel bad for a lot of the superstars that actually had to go through with that terrible 60-something episode, week-in, week-out season. And Alex Riley got nothing out of that, neither did Trent, neither did Yoshi Tatsu. Uh, AJ was mad, able to, like, deal with that shit, but that's because she also had to deal with, uh, the Daniel Bryan storylines on the side, and Caitlyn was basically destined for the title, but now she's gone, as of yesterday. Maxine left, Derek Bateman is in TNA, the primetime players just managed to get out of that bullshit, but Hornswoggle is still a douchebag, uh, Epic and Primo had to go through a makeover. And Johnny Curtis went through a makeover. So really, that shit was a nightmare. Oh, and of course, Alex Riley is still in the dark. And Dave... See, McGillicuddy had to go through another makeover too, and now he's Curtis Axel. So you see how this shit doesn't fucking work. But now that you have the FCW NXT, it's great. People are hyping it up. Stars are being made. It's the real deal. I mean, you have Seth Rollins, you have Biggie Langston, eventually we'll have Bo Dallas too. And then you also have guys like Sami Zayn, Adrian Neville. Stuff is getting interesting. And of course the Divas are getting their hype too. So that's it for the shows. Now let's talk about the fact that we could use this as a means of watching pay-per-views for a cheaper price. Because we can get this... For nine ninety nine, and with it, the respective pay per view for that month is free essentially. But the catch is so that you don't cheat yourself out of the money because these pay per views are like fifty or sixty bucks normally. You have a six month commitment. Meaning that as soon as you commit to it, you pay the first nine ninety nine stuff, you've gotta do it again six times, which counts as about sixty bucks. And that's just so you don't hassle your way to get WrestleMania for nine ninety nine instead of sixty bucks and then cancel the uh, 
subscription the next month. You actually have to commit to it. For me at the moment, I could afford the WWE Network. I could afford six months down the line to be able to enjoy all these pay-per-views for a cheaper price. The problem is I don't want to be oversaturated with all this stuff. This is a lot of content. And while I was able to maintain responsibility back when I did have a subscription to Netflix during 2012, in terms of wrestling, watching it on my computer, or let's say on that shitty-ass phone, or let's say even on my PlayStation 3, it's not very convenient. Okay, on television, thanks to my PS3, it'll be worth doing. Yet, otherwise, I really won't enjoy using it on my crappy-ass phone. And the best bet will be this burnt-out laptop I'm using at the moment. Obviously, I'm only going to use it for the pay-per-views. And I don't even watch the pay-per-views anymore. I don't stream it for free. I don't try to do all that sideways shit. I don't pay for it. Yet, it's probably the best I'll ever... The most I'll ever use with it. Since it'd come with it, uh... Because I don't care about... All these extra programs... That look more fitting for the YouTube channel. Legends House seems like a total joke for me. I'm done with reality TV and reviewing it week in and week out. 2013 was the year for me to review reality TV. This is a new era for me. The era of not having to do that bullshit. That's about it. Uh, all in all, what I think about this is that it's a good means of appeasing to the hardcore wrestling fans. Because as fishy as it may be, all its tactics, all the underhanded fine print shit, that's just a means of making sure that the exploitative softcore wrestling fans, or the fans that aren't willing to pay up, they don't fuck it up, the system up for everyone else, but, besides that, it does seem worth spending money for, I certainly have funds at the moment, yet, it's kind of iffy, if you don't care about the pay-per-views, if you don't really want to sit the time to see it, then it's not really worth getting. Because Countdown's not going to give you the $10. No one's going to say, take my money, I want to see WWE Countdown or WWE Rewind or Legends House. They'll want to see the WCW pay-per-views, they'll want to see the ECW shit, they'll want to see maybe some past pay-per-views, but they'll definitely want to stay updated on the new pay-per-views of the morrow. And that's what it will be there for. I'm certainly interested in using it to save up for both Mania and SummerSlam. But other than that, my pockets aren't really in the mood to get any thinner. So this is Mr. Wonka 7, I give the WWE Network a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It'll be a 5 when a lot of the stuff actually does become in my interest. But for now, I really don't care about most of the pay-per-views. I'm good with just Raw and an occasional SmackDown. So, suck my dick.